Hey folks, welcome back to Dig World. We're here to bring you the most amazing discoveries from the archaeological world. Today, we'll show you what scientists found beneath Antarctic ice. So, let's begin. Many scientists believe that understanding the behavior of glaciers' frozen forms requires the use of liquid water. Meltwater has been observed to lubricate their gravelly bases and speed their journey to the sea. Researchers in Antarctica have uncovered hundreds of interconnected liquid lakes and rivers nestled within the ice itself in recent years. They've also observed thick sediment basins beneath the ice, which could house the world's largest water reservoirs. However, no one has confirmed the presence of huge amounts of liquid water in below ice sediments nor has anyone investigated how it may interact with the ice. A team has now documented a massive, actively circulating groundwater system in deep strata in West Antarctica for the first time. They claim that such systems, which are likely ubiquitous in Antarctica, may have hit her to unknown ramifications for how the frozen continent responds to or even contributes to climate change. The findings were published today in the journal Science. People have theorized that deep groundwater could exist in these layers, but no one has done any extensive imaging, said the study's lead author Chloe Gustafsson, a doctoral student at Columbia University's Lamont Daughtry Earth Observatory. The amount of groundwater we discovered was so enormous that it's very likely to alter ice stream processes. Now we must learn more and figure out how to incorporate it into models. Scientists have been flying radars and other instruments above the Antarctic ice sheet for decades in order to scan subsurface structures. These missions have discovered, among other things, sedimentary basins sandwiched between ice and bedrock. However, airborne geophysics can only disclose the basic outlines of such objects, not their water content or other properties. A 2019 investigation of Antarctica's McMurdo Dry Valleys made an exception, using helicopter-borne equipment to document a few hundred meters of subglacial groundwater beneath around 350 meters of ice. However, most of Antarctica's known sedimentary basins are significantly deeper, and most of its ice is much thicker, making flying equipment ineffective. Researchers have dug through the ice into the sediments into a few places, but have only penetrated the first few meters. As a result, models of ice sheet dynamics only include hydrologic systems within or just beneath the ice. This is a significant shortcoming. The majority of Antarctica's vast sedimentary basins are located below present sea level, jammed between bedrock-bound land ice and floating marine ice shelves that surround the continent. They are supposed to have formed on sea floors during hotter periods with greater sea levels. If the ice shelves recede in a warming climate, ocean waters might reinvade the sediments and the glaciers behind them could surge ahead, raising global sea levels. The latest study focused on the 60-mile-wide Willens Ice Stream, one of a half-dozen fast-moving streams feeding the world's largest ice shelf, which is about the size of Canada's Yukon Territory. The previous study has shown a subglacial lake within the ice, as well as a sedimentary basin beneath it. Shallow drilling into the first foot or so of sediments has revealed liquid water and robust microbial life. But what lies deeper down has remained a mystery. Gustafsson, together with Lamont Daughtry geophysicist Carrie Key, Colorado School of Mines geophysicist Matthew Siegfried, and mountaineer Megan Seifert, were dropped on the Willens by a U.S. Air Force LC-130 sky plane in late 2018. Their goal is to better map the sediments and their properties using geophysical sensors mounted directly on the surface. If something went wrong, they would have to go for six weeks, dig in the snow, plant instruments, and do innumerable other activities. The researchers utilized a technique known as magnetoalluric imaging, which analyzes the penetration of natural electromagnetic radiation created high in the planet's atmosphere into the Earth. Researchers may generate MRI-like maps on the different elements by measuring the changes in electromagnetic energy conductivity of ice, sediments, fresh water, salty water, and bedrock. The crew placed their equipment in snow holes for a few days at a time, then dug them out and relocated them, finally recording data at over a dozen different locations. They also reanalyzed natural seismic waves emitted by the Earth that had been collected by another team in order to differentiate between bedrock, sediment, and ice. Their investigation revealed that, depending on location, the sediments stretch from a half kilometer to nearly two kilometers beneath the ice before striking bedrock. They also confirmed that the sediments are saturated with liquid water all the way to the bottom. The researchers estimate that if all of it were recovered, it would form a water column 220 to 820 meters high, at least 10 times larger than the shallow hydrologic systems within and beneath the ice, and possibly much larger. Because salty water transfers energy better than fresh water, 
Scientists were also able to demonstrate that groundwater becomes more saline as depth increases. This makes sense, according to Key, because the sediments are thought to have originated in a marine environment a long time ago. Ocean waters most likely last reached what is now the Whelan area during a warm period 5,000 to 7,000 years ago, soaking the sediments with salt water. When the ice retreated, new meltwater was driven into the upper strata by pressure from above and friction at the ice base. He believes it's still filtering down and blending in today. According to the experts, the gradual draining of fresh water into the sediments could prevent water from piling up at the ice's base. This could put a stop to the ice's forward advance. Other scientists' measurements at the ice stream's grounding line, the point at which the land-bound ice stream joins the floating ice shelf, show that the water is slightly less salty than regular seawater. This implies that fresh water is moving through the sediments to the ocean, allowing more meltwater to enter and keeping the system stable. However, if the ice surface thins, a probable possibility as the climate warms, the direction of water flow could be reversed, according to the researchers. Overlying pressures would fall, and deeper groundwater might start to well up toward the ice base. This could lubricate the ice's foundation even more and boost its forward mobility. The Willens are already moving ice seaward at a rate of around a meter per day, which is quite fast for glacial ice. Furthermore, if deep groundwater runs upward, it may take up the geothermal heat naturally created in the bedrock, thawing the ice's foundation and propelling it upward, but it's unclear whether and to what degree this will occur. Ultimately, we don't have many restrictions on the permeability of the sediments or at the rate at which the water would flow, Gustafan said. Would it make a big enough difference to cause a chain reaction? Or in the big picture of ice flow, is groundwater a small player? According to the researchers, the presence of bacteria in the shallow sediments adds another wrinkle. This basin and others are presumably populated farther below, and if groundwater begins to move upward, the dissolved carbon needed by these species will be brought up with it. Some of this carbon would subsequently be carried to the ocean by lateral groundwater movement. This might convert Antarctica into a previously unconsidered supply of carbon in a world currently awash in it. However, Gustafsson questions if this would have any major impact. According to the researchers, the current study is only the beginning of addressing these problems. The discovery of deep groundwater dynamics has altered our knowledge of ice stream behavior and will necessitate changes to subglacial water models, they write. The other authors are Scripps Institution of Oceanography's Helen Fricker, Central Washington University's J. Paul Winberry, Tulane University's Ryan Venturelli, and Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences' Alexander Muchad. Chloe Gustafsson is now a Scripps postdoctoral researcher. So, this was it for today, guys. We hope you enjoy our content. Like and share the video if you did. Subscribe to Dig World on Revealed Finds of the Universe for many more amazing videos. Stay tuned, as we'll be back soon with another informative video for your amusement. Till then, keep digging.